Alright, here we go, let's do this. Hi everyone, Pete Gallia here and welcome back to my channel. Today we are once again chilling on the sofa here talking about some basic stuff you can do with the Asalato slash Kashaka slash all the other names that exist for it. Now if you've just picked up a, your first pair of this amazing instrument and you haven't checked out my other video on the first thing you should learn on the Asalato, do go and check that out now and I've got plenty of Kashaka related content on my channel here so there's plenty to keep you engaged and entertained with this instrument now that you've started. So today what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the second thing I think you should learn with this instrument once you've got this down which we talked about in the previous video. Now what just happened there is we're playing groupings of three and just shaking through them um, with no stop between any of these uh, takita, 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 takita kind of groupings. But today we're going to be involving a little catch at the bottom to uh, give us some more rhythmic opportunities, basically. So first and foremost, once we know how to do the little flip-flop move and um, we're comfortable with the shaking and all of that, let's just start off by getting comfortable with a catch. So what I like to do is just let go of the bottom shaker ball and just kind of hold it down like this and um, uh, start by essentially pulling it in. Let it hang down with some slack. Oh, boom, there you go. Kind of, you can even practice a little bit like this, throwing it down and just catching it at the bottom. And get used to the idea of catching it with the bottom fingers. Now, there's a couple of things I want you to be aware of when you're practicing this. First thing is the length of the string that you've got with your kashaka. I uh, play this pair here from Kashaka UK at the moment. It's my main one that I've got. And as you can see, it's got some knots there, um, which means you can adjust the length of the string. And um, I'm pretty happy and comfortable with where they're at now. But at first it took me a little bit of trial and error of shortening and lengthening to see what was most comfortable for my hand. So if this isn't working out for you at all today, Try lengthening the string and try the rhythm again, try shortening the string, see what works for you. And if you don't have an adjustable string, what I did with my very first pair, which unfortunately I don't have here today so I can't show you, but the string was far too long so I just took the string and taped a portion of it down there, like that, to just make it a little bit shorter essentially, like that. Now. I wouldn't highly recommend it because it's kind of a pain in the rear to play them like that but that's all I had and that's kind of what I started with. Now the second thing I want you to keep in mind pretty much all the time when you're playing the asalato is that when you catch you really don't want to force it and try and grab onto it and um, it's really not necessary because this is also something I've seen a couple of people try when when they're getting started with this instrument and um, to be honest, the most important thing, as with every instrument, is that you're relaxed, as relaxed as possible. And the reason is this, when you're gonna have that ball coming through, if you're relaxed, it's probably gonna push the top ball up a little bit to create space for it in your hand, there. And actually, there, this top one is quite loose in my hand there, it also allows me to click the top one as well if I like at any point but that's a whole other thing. So remember length of the string is very important and to be relaxed so there's our catching motion. Now the main thing for today is we're going to combine that catch with the rhythm we learned in the previous uh, lesson and essentially we're going to get this. I'm going to play it with both hands for you and then continue to break it down. Here we go.
Now, of course, it's a good idea to practice one hand at a time. And once you've got your shakes going, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and 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 one. So it's on the four end that you're going to be letting go of that bottom ball. Now, don't think about it too much. Allow your body to just figure it out on its own and just listen to the sound you're making. And it should make sense with some time. But to look at the counting of it, if you want to do that, it's one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and a four e and one two three four and that's where i let go of it okay now once i let go of it that means it's gonna go four and one e and the it hits beat one and the a uh of the one now it's on the a uh that we're gonna catch it on the bottom and per bar we'll have click click and then shake shake the last two beats of the bar are gonna be shake shake this is, again, as I've mentioned in some other videos, probably something you've seen on Instagram already. It's one of the first things people do, so it tends to be a common thing that people are filming at the moment. So that's great. Go on social media, and right after you follow me, uh, you can look up some hashtags and, and different tags and videos and stuff, and you'll see a lot of this and get a lot of different uh, views and perspectives on the, on the matter. Now, we're going to get one, two, three, four, click, click, shake, shake, click, click, shake, shake, click, click, shake, shake. Now, what I see a lot of beginners do is this, which fair enough, it makes sense. It's not an easy instrument to get used to, but you want to avoid this kind of choppy, not so together sounding vibe, kind of like this, like click, click, shake, shake, click, click, shake, shake. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, one of the most important things, besides being relaxed all the time, of course, is the fact that my hand is constantly shaking through the whole thing. And that gives it that continuity and that flow, that movement. Two, three, four. You can see, I'm always shaking. Shake it before you bake it. Ten points to whoever gets what movie that's a reference to. So once you've got this down and you're making sure to shake throughout the entire rhythm to get that continuity, I would recommend, you know, practicing it with your other hand. Practicing also the rhythm on one hand while shaking with the other, like this. Other way. It's kind of funny how I shake because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sat on the sofa, so I'm bouncing the whole time. Anyways, moving on. Then you want to do it in unison with your hands like this. Two, three, four. Maybe go a bit faster. Now, as a sort of supplement to that, if you will, just like in the previous video, we talked about how using the groupings of three on each hand in an offset manner gives you a sort of like a, a shuffle vibe, like. You can do a similar thing here, where you play each hand sort of alternating. Let me show you what I mean. Two, three, four.
Now I remove the shake, 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 shake. Now I'm just doing. And in the gap, you kind of alternate. So. One, a two, a three, a four, a 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 one. So a quick recap for you. Remember, stay relaxed, of course. Remember the string length, adjust it to your liking and practice your little like a drop and catch, not the drumstick technique, drop catch. The asalato technique of drop catch. Once you've got that down, remember to stay relaxed. So it's much easier once this comes into your hand, it's gonna push that up a little bit and create a bit of space, making it much easier to grab rather than holding onto this top ball for dear life, hoping that it doesn't fall out of your hand and then, you know, I mean, I just caught it there, but <laughs> it makes it much more difficult to kind of grab onto the, the bottom one there. And once you've got that, get to your shake, And there you've got it, you've learned a new rhythm, the flip-flop catch. And um, the next thing you're gonna want to do is get comfortable with it, have fun, and mix and match it. Check this out. Just having a little bit of fun there. So yeah, there were a couple extra little bits and bobs I threw in there, but having fun, it's what it's all about, right? So my friends, that uh, pretty much brings us to the end of uh, this video today. And uh, it gives you something else to practice on your asalato for a while now. So I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. If you dig it, leave a comment and a like and all of that. If you have any questions, also ask in a comment and we can have a discussion about it and uh, learn more through each other and that'll be a lot of fun. Other than that, I invite you to also check out the other content I have here on my channel about the asalato shakers, uh, different rhythms and polyrhythms you can work on. And if you also happen to be a drum set player, I've got some uh, rudiment based practice pad stuff you can check out, which uh, I hope you'll enjoy also. But other than that, I guess that's it for today. Have a great time practicing, have fun with it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.